A recital of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. The text for this is taken from Wikipedia. And for those of you who are regular followers of my channel, you may have some inkling as to the long-term game plan, so to speak, as to why I'm doing this. And hopefully you'll enjoy it. So, here it goes. Once upon a midnight dreary, whilst I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, whilst I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. And "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. "'Only this and nothing more. "'Ah, distinctly, I remember it was a bleak December, "'and each se separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. "'Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow "'from my book Circus of Sorrow, Sorrow for the Lost Lenore, "'for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, "'nameless here for evermore.' And the silken, sad, uncertain rusting of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, just this and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. "'Sir?' said I, or oh, madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the, um, um, the fact is I was napping, and you, so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, uh, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, Fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore? This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore! Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again... I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely this is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what, what, what there is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be, sir, be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind. Nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the st safety days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, nor a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mine lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of Peleus just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad f fancy into smiling, but the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, said I, are sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me, what's thy lordly name here on this night's plutonian shore? Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly. Though this answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon a sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further he then uttered, not a feather he then fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, and my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is only stock and sh store. Caught from some unhappy master, who, unmerciful disaster, followed fast and followed faster till his songs once burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. 
But the raven, still beguiling my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat up in front of the bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to liking fancy under, unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking, Nevermore. Thus I sat, engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burnt into my bosom's core. This and more I set divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated over, but whose velvet of violet lining with the lamplight gloating over, she shall press, ah, uh, never more. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tuffled floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee, respite, respite, and nepenthe from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil. Whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, Desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, On this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, Is there, is there balm of Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above thee, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with, with sorrow laden if, within the distant Adienne, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden who the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Be that word our sign imparting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above the door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thee from my door. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Peleus just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out the shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted, nevermore. Sleep tight.